And that is a plausible model, a very plausible model to explain for the bizarre things here. Gary, it's not bizarre. It's only bizarre to people who are stuck in a closet who have been living in a hole for the last 25 right. years. Like, you can't get back into the bubble once it's, you've been out. You can't. Do you remember the Brookings report mm -hmm. that we talked about so many times on, on, on this show and others? Yes, sir. This official document, which was commissioned by NASA, in its formative months, I mean, the ink wasn't dry on the paper of the charter that President Eisenhower signed in July of 1958. What Brookings was commissioned to do, and Brookings, is, for those who don't know, is a major think tank in Washington. NASA... Richard Hoagland, a member of our team of intelligence... ...turned to Brookings and basically said, okay, we got a... ...UFO diaries. ...space program now, we got a... ...our team... ...space agency, tell us what impact it will have in the out years, meaning the future. Yeah, the what if. <clears throat> and what's interesting... EnterpriseMission.com That shouldn't be happening. Again... EnterpriseMission.com Look at this pattern. Of intelligence. If you look carefully, you'll see that the pattern remains the same, all right, in terms of the megastructure. And I, I know this might sound a little nuts, sir. Um, no, no, it doesn't, because I have a possible answer. Let me, again, give you the three possibilities with this. Mm -hmm. First of all, we filmed this in a Masonic Lodge. Oh, Masonic Lodge, but in the 18th, <laughs> okay? It was a very weird place, and that's why we filmed there, you know? Okay. And I have always had strong feelings that these Masonic Lodges knew something and were passing on something, you know, down through time that uh, we needed to know. This is now back to the reflection shot. Look at this. Intelligence. The fascination of the faces on Mars for me and, and, uh, and my fascination with Richard Hoagland, who's been the, the big mover and shaker in all of that. Look at this. Geometry of intelligence. Uh, we got them from Hoagland, we got them from NASA, and there you are. I mean, one of them's going to say, yeah, those are ours. This is, this is a whole apartment complex. See the layering? Of intelligence. And they brought together a whole bunch of blue ribbon people, you know, from industry and government, the military, business, you know, law, and the names are all available in the documents, again, available on the UFO diary. And they took about a year to do this UFO diaries study. And I was very fortunate to have worked with one of the participants. Her name was Mrs. Peterson. <laughs> she was probably the most famous in the UFO diaries. I worked with her at Masonic Lodge. Planetarium at the old Masonic Lodge, but in the 18th. <laughs> when I was there back in the uh, seven. In the region designated as Sidonia. Sunset. You see, I told you, you were probably the guy that was pointing out the stars <laughs> when I went there. UFO diaries. Sedonia. Sunset. <laughs> Probably. Anyway, this is Peterson. <laughs> and I would have these interesting conversations with her stomping around with her big walking stick. Face on Mars, mysterious picture. Because she had some kind of a, a, of a problem and she needed assistance in walking, so she had this huge, big walking stick. It looked like something that Friar Tuck would use in a Robin Hood movie to knock guys off the uh, bridge. The staff, and yeah. she'd stomp around and, and she'd talk about the future of the UFO diet space program. Well, I did not know them. Uh -huh. Gosh, I wish I'd known them. That she was a participant in this UFO diaries. Semi-secret study. Huh. Which basically said, Gary, from her position as an enterprise mission .com. an anthropologist studying so-called primitive civilizations in American Old Masonic Lodge face on Mars mysterious pictures in the UFO diaries. Right. Her position was that if NASA, Richard Hoagland, a member of our team of intelligence, ever found anything out there through time that even hinted of UFO diaries, ruins or intelligence or libraries or some previous civilization, they should not tell us because it would destroy us. Lee Shackelford, Mrs. Peterson, <laughs> you're sitting at the desk looking at these face on Mars. Monster. Mysterious pictures photographs and trying to say what if you know yes. and those are quotes that were written to be said by by dr hoagland and you know without their voice of authority there american authorities are sabotaging efforts to discover the truth they have to have they had to invent a character who's guessing right system initialized you know what a mess now, those, so, those images though again of when that she's thumbing through this
All that she had was things that I had gotten from Dr. Hoagland's books. Of intelligence. Face on Mars, mysterious pictures. That I had tried to, to organize into some kind of a dramatic form in the script. Right. And they're just, they're just winging it. Okay, now here's the thing. What you got from Richard Hoagland's books. Right. Accessing data. Accessing data. Accessing data. Now what about that picture she's holding? That did not come from Richard Hoagland. Really? Really. Hey, look at it closely, my friend. <laughs> oh, well, I... I mean... <laughs> oh, well, I... I mean... <laughs> oh, well, I... I mean... That picture she's holding. That did not come from Richard Hoagland. Really? Oh, well, I... I mean... <laughs> oh, well, I... I mean, uh... Well, I know it goes b back a long way, but that did... I don't know where that came from. Richard does not know where that came from. No one knows where that came from. Oh, well, I... That's why the episode that you see is the way it is, because suddenly there was these, this script with these big holes in it. Dick. Head. The surface of Mars, we now know, is covered with meteor craters. All these things hit Dr. Hoagland. Dick. Head. Was supposed to say. In the region designated as Sidonia. Oh, well, I, so now the, the guys at the studio were now scrambling to try to find ways to cover the same material just so the show would cut together, just so the things that had already been shot would, would connect to each other. Oh, well, I... Uh -huh. But I remember that when they finally did it in production, you can tell watching it, they, they're largely improvising that dialogue. They've got the gist of what was supposed to be in the script. But, <laughs> Improvising you know. the dialogue, huh? And that was an incredible political position that Mrs. Peterson <laughs> and her our team. colleagues took with NASA. Richard Hoagland, a member of our team of intelligence, back in UFO Diaries, in the region designated as Sidonia. And what I think happened, huh. I can't prove it because I haven't got those memos yet. All right. But what I think happened is that this study, which recommended a whole bunch of stuff, became policy. It became the secret Bible by which NASA Richard Hoagland, a member of our team of intelligence conducted itself in all the future years when in fact Richard Hoagland found ruins on its Enterprise Mission dot com conference photographs. Because part of the UFO diaries Sidonia Sunset study predicted that NASA Richard Hoagland, a member of our team of intelligence, might find artifacts of former civilizations on Mars on a future space mission. Yeah. Paraphrasing. EnterpriseMission.com. So what we have now is we have a, an agency in incredible turmoil. EnterpriseMission.com. Mm -hmm. Because you've got part of it that wants to tell us what it's finding. And the way I know that is because we got this first Richard Hoagland. EnterpriseMission.com. Image released. And there's artifacts all over the damn thing. Well, that's a long time to keep something like this under wraps. EnterpriseMission.com. It's like uh, part of the Majestic cover-up of Roswell. It's like they're all interconnected. Well, yes, it is. And if you're basically told... Mars Revealer. When you get a job at a place... EnterpriseMission.com. Okay. Uh-huh. If you're basically told that if you make the wrong moves, you tell the wrong people what's really on some of these... UFO diaries. Images. You're out of here. It will, well, no, not only that. Go to jail. Accidentally no, be put no, off no, a bridge. No, 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 it starts by appealing to your highest nature. Okay. All right. For instance, when I was with Cronkite, when I was back with CBS, we had a uh, an anchor on a rival network, NBC, named John Chancellor. He he died of cancer several years ago. He was he was a brilliant journalist. He became anchor of the NBC Nightly News during the Vietnam War. John Chancellor and some of his colleagues got access to a story. They dug up details vis-a-vis -vis the Vietnam War, which right. was ongoing at the time. Mm -hmm. Lyndon Johnson, the President of the United States, called Chancellor personally and said, John, can you not run this story? It will impact negatively on national security, other things we're doing. We really would like you not to run it. Now, oh. back then, when a journalist got a call from the President saying, don't talk about something. They didn't. Because the hand is on the throat and it's pretty obvious. You dick. Hogan. Well, he was appealing to his higher self, to his higher nature, to be patriotic, to be, to not jeopardize the country. Now, if you follow this kind of logic up with, they're also sanctioned. If, for instance, the people working for NASA have to sign documents, as uh, Ed Mitchell admitted, when I did our film one night and I had a debate with Ed Mitchell, remember that some some years ago? A while and ago. Ed, 